Shortly before a midnight deadline on the 7th of July, Zuma left his homestead in Kandla in a convoy of cars to hand himself over to authorities. He was to serve his 15-month prison sentence handed to him by the Constitutional Court for contempt of court. The conviction followed Zuma's defiance of an instruction to appear before the Zonda Commission of Inquiry into State Capture to answer to allegations of high-level corruption during his time in office. Prison authorities later confirmed that Zuma was incarcerated at the Escort Correctional Centre in KwaZulu-Natal. Two days after his incarceration, the Peter Marisburg High Court dismissed Zuma's application to overturn his prison sentence, ruling that a lower court couldn't overturn a decision made by the Apex Court. Zuma's rescission applications to the Constitutional Court were still to be heard the following week. Meanwhile, numerous posts on social media encouraged protests, including attacks on highways and retail centres, in support of Zuma. On the evening of the 9th of July, protesters blockaded the N3 highway and torched at least 20 trucks and looted shops in the Moy River area. The truck that has been burned is one of my biggest trucks, which is a weight of about 2 million. Protesters later closed the N3 and N2 highways, which affected the transportation of goods from Durban and Richards Bay to the industrial hub of Johannesburg and Cape Town. The unrest spread within KwaZulu Natal. Shopping malls and centres were ransacked by mobs who took food, electronic goods, clothes, and liquor. Attacks on retail centres also spread inland to Gauteng. In Durban and Pietermaritzburg, crowds of looters attacked warehouses and set alight several buildings and factories. The looting and violence forced multiple businesses and retailers to close. While initially the protest appeared to have been in support of calls for the release of Zuma, the situation later degenerated into acts of criminality. Government called for calm amidst growing threats to shut down the province. The outnumbered and under-resourced police force failed to quell the wanton looting and destruction. As a result, private security companies, armed civilians and vigilante groups took on law enforcement duties by protecting businesses and communities from rioting and looting. We've got our own neighborhood to watch there as well. We've been sitting out whole day, whole night. As I'm standing here, just came from our night shift straight here to come and get some food and stuff because we really need this. It's terrible what's happening out there. This stoked racial tensions between black and Indian South Africans in Phoenix, north of Durban. The area with a majority of Indian residents armed themselves to fight off looters and several racially motivated attacks and killings reportedly took place. The majority of the more than 300 fatalities were attributed to stampedes during the looting sprees. Both the Durban and Richards Bay ports ceased operations. Damage to transport infrastructure caused fuel and food shortages, which led to queues outside petrol stations and grocery stores. It is a scramble for essentials. Uh, here, here where we are, people are having to use cards only because they're not accepting cash. And people are going to be only taking 20 items per person. So when we heard yesterday that people shouldn't worry about food security and everything because there's enough, it doesn't make sense. Where is it going to come from? The harvesting and distribution of fresh produce were interrupted. The supply of medicine was disrupted and the COVID-19 vaccine rollout program was affected while the country was still battling the third wave of infections. Government grants and pension payouts were also affected. On the 12th of July, the South African National Defence Force was deployed to help restore calm. And on the same day, the Constitutional Court dismissed Zuma's application to rescind the ruling to imprison him. More than 2,000 people were arrested in the province. After about 10 days of unrest, government started to count the losses. The economic impact of the July unrest is estimated at between 35 and 50 billion rand. Rene Heiner, SABC News, Durban.